Hello folks, in this video I'm going to go over different collision methods available in Pygame. The collisions I will cover are going to be rectangle collisions, point collisions and line collisions. I'll begin with rectangle collisions as that's the most common type. Let's first of all look at how a collision check works. Detecting a collision is a case of checking to see if any of the edges between two rectangles intersect. This will result in an overlapping collision region. Luckily, we don't have to do this manually, as Pygame has a built-in method for checking for collision between rectangles, and this is the collide rect method. Let's take a look at some code and see how this works in action. I have my starter code here, which I'll quickly explain. First of all, I am importing my modules. I'm creating the game window. Then I create my two rectangles. So rect underscore one is going to be the main object rectangle that I'm going to move around. And then I have my obstacle rectangle. This one is going to be positioned randomly each time the game runs. So I've loaded in the random module. I then have a few colors defined just to save me having to type them out manually each time. Then I hide the mouse cursor and then I get into my main game loop. Within the game loop, the first thing is to update the game background and then I also set the color of my game rectangle. It's going to be green to begin with, but it will change every time there's a collision. Next, I get the coordinates of the mouse cursor and I position rectangle one at those coordinates. So this way I can move the rectangle around with the mouse. After that, I draw both rectangles on the screen. So there's rectangle one and then there's the obstacle rectangle. Then I've got my event handler just to allow me to close the game down. And lastly, I use the flip method to update the game screen. And then we close out with pygame.quit. When I run this, I get a green rectangle, which I can move around with the mouse cursor and a blue rectangle, which is positioned randomly down in the bottom right corner. At the moment, nothing happens when there's an overlap between the two because I haven't looked at collision detection yet. To check for collision, we just need to call that collide rect method that I spoke about earlier. We go up here where I set the color of the rectangle. And just underneath, I add an if statement. We'll say if rect underscore one, which is the rectangle I move with the mouse cursor, dot collide rect. Now the argument that this is going to take is the other rectangle that I want to check for collision with. So I'm taking my rectangle one and I'm checking for collision against a second rectangle. Well, in this case, it's the obstacle rectangle. If collision is detected, then we're going to change that color variable. This variable up here, which is initially set to green, is going to be set to red. And that's all there is to it. If I run this again and I move this rectangle around, as soon as it comes in contact with the blue obstacle rectangle, my rectangle changes from green to red. Now that's easy enough for a single rectangle, but in a typical game we will have a lot more than just two rectangles to check against. So let's see how to handle multiple collision checks. First we go back up to the top where we create this individual obstacle rectangle and we create multiples of them. I'll start by making an empty list called obstacles. I will set that to empty square brackets to create my empty list. Then I add a for loop to iterate through and I'll say for underscore in range 16 and I indent this original obstacle rect line. So I still create them in the same way, but I'm going to do it multiple times within this for loop. Once an obstacle is created, I need to add it into the list. We'll say obstacles dot append obstacle rect. Next, I go down into my game loop and down here where I'm drawing the rectangles, I need to update this second line to make sure that I'm drawing all of the rectangles in the obstacles list. To do that, I simply iterate through that list. I'll say for obstacle in obstacles, indent this next line, and just change the last variable here to say obstacle. If I run this again, I'm now going to get all of these individual rectangles in place, and I can still move my green rectangle around, but notice that I'm not getting that collision detection anymore. I'm still checking for collision up here, but I'm only checking against the very last obstacle rectangle that was created. I'm not checking against all of them that are in that list. Well, to do that check, I need to again iterate through them. I will say for obstacle in obstacles, and then I indent the code that was below. So I'm still checking for collision between rectangle one and the obstacles, but I need to change this argument here to be the specific obstacle in that list. If I run this again, now, as I make contact with any of the blue rectangles, it detects a collision and it changes my current rectangle from green to red. It is possible to refine this code further since Pygame has a built-in function for checking for collision with a list of rectangles. 
This works the same way as what I have here, but it saves us manually iterating through this list. We can get rid of this for loop here and then unindent this if statement here. Next, I change this function from collide rect to collide list. And what I pass in here instead of the rectangle is the list, which is obstacles. If a collision is detected, then this function will tell me which rectangle I collided with. But if there is no collision, then the value it will return is minus one. So to check for collision, I need to make sure that this is greater than or equal to zero. So this doesn't return a Boolean true or false like the previous function did. Let's run this and just check if it's working the same as before. And you can see the collision has maintained as it was previously. But there is an added little bonus with this. We can print out the output of this collision check. So what I can do within this if statement is add another print and I can just copy this down. So I want to print the result of this collision check between rectangle one and the collide list function on the obstacles list. If I run this now, I'm getting collision number with each rectangle that I collide with. Now we can move on to the next collision check, which is collide point. This function will check for a collision between a point on the screen and a rectangle. And it can be very useful for applications that require mouse input, such as clicking on an object or clicking on buttons. We can continue with the code we already have here, but we can just tidy it up a little bit. I'll keep my obstacle rectangles, but I don't need this main rectangle anymore. So I can delete this one. Then we go into the main game loop and tidy this up a little bit as well. We can remove this code here that checks for collision with the rectangle. We don't need that anymore. And then this section down here that positions the rectangle at the mouse cursor isn't needed either. Then when it comes to drawing all rectangles, we can remove the first line, which was drawing our original rectangle. We don't have that one anymore. And we'll just keep the obstacles in place. The mouse is still hidden there. So let's delete this section of code up here as well. So if I run this now, what I want to be able to do is that whenever I hover my mouse over one of these rectangles, it changes color because it detects a collision. To do that, first of all, we need to know where the mouse cursor is on the screen. Let's take the mouse position by saying pause is equal to pygame.mouse.get underscore pause. And that will return the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. Next, we want to look for collision between that mouse coordinate and each of the rectangles. I'm already iterating through them down here where I'm drawing them. So within this existing for loop, I'm going to add a collision check. I'll look at each obstacle by saying if obstacle, and then I will run that collide point function. And within here, we pass in the X and Y coordinates of a point on the screen. In our case, it's the position of the mouse. So I'll pass in the pause variable. Then I indent the next line. This means that if there is a collision between the mouse and the rectangle, I want to draw them on the screen, but I'm going to change the color to red. I can then add an else statement down here. So if there is no collision, I still want to draw these rectangles. Let's copy and paste this down, but I want them to be drawn in a green color. So if I run this now, all the rectangles are showing up and they're all green. But as soon as I hover over one of them with the mouse, it changes to red. Straight away, you can see the usefulness of this. You can combine this with a mouse click event and these rectangles become buttons. The third and final collision check is a little different to the ones we looked at so far. This one checks for a collision between a rectangle and a line. And it's something that I've used in my projects to check for line of sight between an enemy and a player. I draw a line from each enemy to the player and then check for collision with obstacles. This allows me to determine if the enemies can see the player or if there are obstacles in the way that hide the player. I can continue with this current code and just add a few extra bits to demonstrate this. I'll keep the obstacles as they are, but because I'm now checking against collision between a rectangle and a line, I need to define my line. Well, a line is done with a start and an end point. For now, I'm just going to define the line start. I'll define this as the middle of the screen. I can say screen width divided by two and screen height divided by two. That will give me X and Y coordinates in the center of the screen to start my line at. Next, I will draw that line between the start point and the end point, which is going to be the position of my mouse cursor. I'm already getting the position of the cursor with this line here. Just underneath this line, I will call pygame.draw.line. I'll pass my first argument, which is screen, then the color, which is white, then the line start variable, the line end variable, which is going to be pause, the variable up here, and lastly, the thickness or the line weight, which will be five pixels. 
I haven't defined this white color yet, so I'm just going to add it in up the top here. I'll say white is equal to 255, 255, and 255. The collision check is actually very similar to what I did previously for collide point. I keep this loop here to be able to iterate through them. Then I have my if statement, which says if obstacle dot, but instead of collide point, I'm going to say clip line. This will essentially check if a line that I pass into this argument comes in contact or intersects through this rectangle. So for the line, I need to define start and end coordinates again. I put another set of brackets and say line start and pause, which is the line end coordinate. And if I run this code again, you're going to see that I have a line being drawn from the center of the screen to my mouse cursor. And wherever it crosses one of these rectangles, it detects a collision and the rectangle changes color. There is another collision check using masks, and this is good when you need really precise collision on a sprite, but I will cover that in a separate tutorial. If you found this video useful, then please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.